what is valence bond theory? It's the idea that when two atoms are bonding, it's the atomic orbitals that are overlapping to form those covalent bonds. The atomic orbitals will have unpaired electrons. Those electrons will want to pair up. And the atomic orbitals, 1s, 2s, 2p, you've heard these things, will physically overlap to form these bonds. For example, in the molecule H2, you'll start with hydrogen's 1s orbital, which is a sphere, and another hydrogen's 1s orbital, which is a sphere. And if they come close enough together, the two will overlap with each other. This electron will pair up with this electron. They will join in a region in the middle, and those electrons in between the two positively charged nuclei are what hold the nuclei close together. Note that the atomic orbitals that are overlapping each have one unpaired electron. Now I'm going to help you visualize that another way. If the two hydrogen atoms are very, very, very far apart, then they're basically not going to interact. And I'm going to call this energy zero because there's been no interaction. If the two hydrogen atoms come very, very, very close together, if they super overlap almost entirely in space, the two nuclei, which again, the nuclei is where the protons and positive charge are, are going to be too close together. Positive charges repel, and that actually costs a lot of energy. So the energy diagram goes to infinity there. There is a magic amount or distance between the nuclei that actually make the overlap stable. You'll have the two electrons in between the two nuclei exerting an attractive force. So the pluses in this nuclei are looking over here and seeing minus charges. And these pluses are looking over here and seeing minus charges. And therefore, they're attracted towards each other. There's a magic radius or bond length where that is most, uh, you know, stable. Now it goes to infinity if they get too close. And it goes up towards zero as they get farther and farther apart. Now, I suppose I should make that an asymptote at zero. And this here represents the bond length. This is just an energy diagram showing that if the two atoms get too close together, it's not energetically favorable. If they're too far apart, they don't interact at all. And there's some amount of energy, a negative amount of energy, or rather, relative to their original states, you're giving off energy or becoming more stable when the two nuclei are the bond length apart from each other. Now we've already shown that for hydrogen, again, the 1s atomic orbital overlaps with the 1s atomic orbital of another hydrogen atom, and they form this overlapped version with the unpaired electrons in the overlapped zone. Very nice, but what if you tried to do that with a more complicated molecule like methane. Methane is a carbon connected to four hydrogens, and all the data we have says that all four of those bonds are equivalent. They're all exactly the same. Now I've scattered these four hydrogens horizontally here, and I've badly misplaced where the 1s's are. 1s's should all be pretty low in energy, but I was just trying to vertically center it to make it pleasing for your eyes. How are you gonna get this carbon to have four atomic orbitals, because it needs one, two, three, four bonds, each with one electron, one unpaired electron with them. Well, you can't, based off of carbon's ground state, atomic orbitals, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And that's why valence bond theory is shored up by hybridization. Hybridization it comes into play a lot with valence bond theory, and there are three main types of hybridization that you're going to need. You're going to need something called sp3 hybridization if you have four sigma bonds or only sigma bonds and lone pairs in your molecule. 
if you have a single pi bond on your molecule, you're probably gonna need sp2 hybridization. And if you have two pi bonds, you're gonna need something called sp hybridization. I've got a video about hybridization if you wanna check that out, but you're here for valence bond theory. So how can you get carbon to have four equal energy or degenerate atomic orbitals ready to overlap with four different hydrogens? The answer is this 2s atomic orbital combines with one, two, three of the 2p atomic orbitals and you hybridize them to form four atomic orbitals, all at the same energy level, somewhere in between the s's and the p's you're combining, and you're gonna call them sp3 hybridized orbitals. You had to combine an s and three of the p's to do it. We had one, two, three, four electrons in the second energy level to start with, so one, two, three, four electrons among the hybrid orbitals, and now we have exactly what the doctor prescribed. Four equivalent energy atomic orbitals, now they are hybridized here, but they're still belonging to just carbon, ready to overlap with one, two, three, four different hydrogen atoms to make one, two, three, four bonds. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. You came here for what valence bond theory is. It's the idea that the atomic orbitals are overlapping. And those atomic orbitals usually contain unpaired electrons. So you'll get to see physically which things are combining. One of the, one of carbon's hybridized orbitals overlaps with this hydrogen's 1s. One of them overlaps with this hydrogen's 1s, etc., etc. Four bonds for four equivalent hybrid orbitals. Beautiful. This contrasts with molecular orbital theory, where the atomic orbitals are adding or subtracting to form new or combinations of the atomic orbitals, which are then called molecular orbitals, but like the adding is bonding and the minusing is antibonding. Just throwing that out there to compare, Valence bond theory is the other way you can try to think about molecular bonding. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.